Hello, hello. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I see that we are live. So I'm going to do this live, but I'll go through this presentation before doing a kind of live interaction kind of thing, but then I'll get back to the chat and check out who's who's watching. So basically just want to go through an opal buying tips, tips and tricks kind of thing. Most of it's going to be geared towards a lot of these online places. So you've got opal auction. Opal Auctions, Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, eBay, all of that. Hopefully my audio is working, can't really tell. Um, so yeah, a lot of online online trading these days. It's always better to do it in person, but I don't know. Online is kind of all we've got a lot of the time. So we just make do. I feel like there's not enough light. There we go. So, number one probably the most important thing as well is just to understand what you're after you'll fall into a lot of traps if you're not entirely sure what you're looking for in the first place so someone sells something that you've never heard of before and all of a sudden they're asking for a billion dollars I mean there was a case that some of you may have seen if you're on Facebook someone selling an Australian Lightning Ridge fire opal kind of thing and it was 15,000 bucks which Honestly, I didn't think was the actual price, but when I asked, they asked me if I could read. So, you know, it's kind of it's kind of interesting the way people approach selling selling things. But I don't know. I'm not the boss of them. They can do what they want. But yeah, so understanding what you want and the standard kind of price range for each type of opal. So where it's from, we all know that Lightning Ridge has a premium. We all know that. Indonesian wood opal is pretty low down on the tier list. Then you've got things like solids, doublets, triplets. You've got to understand that. And you've got to understand how to identify that because otherwise you're going to find yourself buying a doublet or a triplet thinking that it was a beautiful solid piece. So be careful of that. And then quality is the hardest thing to measure. So everything, body tone, brightness, play of color, weight, cut, imperfections, all that kind of stuff comes into play there and you've really got to have an idea of what you want what your budget is and you've got to work with that remember that you are the buyer though so you've actually got a lot of power in the whole transaction scheme of things the seller can't make you buy something so make sure you keep that in mind you don't need to be rushed into anything you can take it easy basically you're in the driver's seat so make sure you don't let yourself get ripped off too much um, so number two, just understanding, going back to the values kind of thing, just understand the standard value for a lot of things. So I knew immediately that the guy asking for this fire opal from Lightning Ridge, asking 15000 bucks for what is essentially honey potch, was insane. So here you can see that there's a base body tone, and an opal brightness chart. So these are both from the Opal Association. I've got their little website over here. Um, I have minimized this website a little bit just because I wanted to remember to say that the website seems to be down at the moment. I haven't been able to get on to any of their links. I just get to the home page. So when it gets back up, you'll be able to see these kind of things. But yeah, it's basically base body tone. You've just got to understand the scale. The darker, the better. And it's the base body tone, not the backing material tone or anything like that. You've got to be able to see this base body tone behind the opal color. So it's what's immediately behind that opal bar, that color bar coming through. And yeah, the opal brightness is basically the play of the brightness of the player color. And then on top of these, you've got the actual player color and the pattern, which this kind of summarizes a couple interesting patterns. I don't actually think I've seen one quite like these. The Contrast on these pictures is awful, but you get the idea. So, step three, understanding retail value. So, here's a shot from Black Opal Direct. God, that's a good opal, but it's $120,000. So, a lot, of, a lot of people give Black Opal Direct a hard time, and Justin a hard time about their pricing, because everything's so expensive, including their rough. But he lives in a world where he is an opal shop. Basically, he is selling things based on retail price, and his retail prices aren't that aren't that bad. 
if you go into the shop here in Adelaide, we've got a lot of opal shops and it's kind of similar pricing. So you've just got to understand that some people are selling at retail price, but if you're on a Facebook marketplace group or whatever, you're probably going to look for some wholesale prices and get a whole bunch of stones for a lot less than what you're, what you're seeing in front of you here. So this is, this is all retail price because it's from Black Opal Direct and they always sell in retail price, including their rough. Their rough is also fairly up there. But that's because he knows. He looks at a piece of rough and he can cut this $120,000 gem out of it and then he'll charge, I don't know, a good chunk of money for the rough that he can get that stone from. So it's it's all up to it's all up to the seller really when it comes to that kind of thing. So hunting for honest sellers, something that I have done a bit, but I I like to give people the benefit of the doubt and just dive in. Mainly because I like to review things for the channel, and if I come across someone real dodge, then I'll just make sure that it comes up on the channel and other people know. But just basically some good signs, accurate descriptions. The bad sign equivalent is people that put like black opal in all their listings and it might be an Andamooka matrix or something. As soon as you start seeing that the descriptions don't match up with the images, you've just you've just got to run and probably not buy from that buyer ever again. Um, consistent quality stones in a parcel, so if you're buying a whole heap of rubs or a whole heap of polished stones or a whole heap of rough, you want them all to be kind of kind of consistent. Otherwise you'll start getting these parcels that are just the weight is made up by adding just garbage to your potch. And it won't even be good potch, it'll just be sand. So yeah, it's you just gotta watch for that. Another good sign is when there's photos and videos. So it's so important because like I said earlier, the colour play is a huge part of selling a stone. And you just don't get that from photos. You can take a hundred photos and maybe put them in a slideshow, but otherwise you're just going to struggle. And some people just put up one photo or two photos, but you want you want a photo of the front, you want a photo from the side, you want a photo from the back, and then you want a video of the whole stone being rotated. So yeah, it's it's uh it's quite mental when people don't really understand what is needed to make a decision. And then we get into the actual photo and video side of things. So this is by far the hardest part for buyers and sellers. I feel for the sellers, I feel for the buyers. It's it's just so rough, literally rough. It's, um, yeah, there's a lot of things when it comes to technology that can be abused quite significantly. So here I've just got a couple examples. The first one is just oversaturation and contrast. So this is where you've got to watch for the fingers, you've got to watch for the background. So here's an opal, small little boulder. I've actually got the piece here. Here he is, I was taking these pictures yesterday. Um, so here, this is literally just using a small filter with my camera. And what you want to look for to see if this is happening is ignore the opal completely, take it out, and then look at the fingers. So if the fingers are starting to get this weird, like, cartoonish effect, you know that the saturation is really high. The other things to look for is the colour change. So the fingers, they can come out purple sometimes, if people are trying to bring out purple in the stones. They can come out pink or red to bring out the pinks or reds. Anything that's changing the background colours is changing on the opal. So that mat you see there, just here behind the fingers, that's my cutting mat here, it's grey in colour, whereas it's turned this weird greenish blue. So that's bringing, that's showing that the whole thing is bringing out the greenish blue across the entire image. So you just got to watch for that kind of stuff. The other thing is brightness. Some people shoot it in really low light because every now and then that brings out a weird look in the opal. So if you shoot it in really low light, or some people will even use like flashlights and stuff, it's, it's really deceptive and it can make the opal look completely different. You just want you just want natural daylight, kind of what will the stone look like under normal lighting conditions. So as soon as people start selling with low light, ultra high light, you know something something sus is going on. And then the last thing is colour temperature. So I've got a by temperature kind of light, and this is it in yellow. So that's a piece of white paper behind it. And if you 
basically if you're bringing in a warm light so anything around the yellowish range if you bring in a warm light you get the warm colors coming through the opal and if you chuck it under a really cool light like the one i've got on at the moment if you chuck on a really cool light you'll bring out the greens and blues really well so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of fun in games but it can be pretty frustrating for everyone and it can also be really deceptive for some people so part six sneaky backgrounds so here i've just used a color body tone scale chart the one from black opal direct which is interesting i should mention that one actually but i'll get to that so the sneaky background basically you can take a video or a photo of your opal especially if it's a crystal opal on a background so a darkened background so here i've used the n1 on the brightness scale just there and you can see the difference it makes it's bringing out a lot of that color and making it a lot more vibrant than what it is on the n9 which is just a pure white kind of square so if someone's shooting on a background you've kind of got to take that into account wet versus dry so this one's a bit interesting because it's not a problem to show them wet all the time so the wet just basically lets you see what a polished stone looks like. Here I've got a dry piece and you can see that it's all frosted because it's a rub. This is actually just that chip that came off one of the pieces the other day. I've still got it here. And then this is it wet. So you're getting rid of a lot of that frosting, you're kind of getting an idea of what it looks like when it's going to be polished. It's not a bad thing, but it also covers up any kind of cracks, any kind of pitting, any kind of this pitting that causes the frosting. Sometimes you can cover up some uh, inclusions and stuff it's it's really good for what it is but once you're starting to use it to cover things it's not it's not great and a lot of people say if you're going to buy in person just always always make sure you see the rough dry and then you wet it because that's how you identify whether you've got crazing all the crazing can be covered up by wet online everything seems to be sold wet and there's rarely a dry picture alongside them or a dry video and I can kind of understand why but at the same time the ideal selling would have a dry video or a dry picture or two. Hey, reputation. So in an online world we can post reviews wherever we want. I'm doing that on YouTube, people can do it on Facebook. It's just the thing I would say to people is let people know so good or bad let people know is the last point i've got there and that goes for anyone we've all got accounts all over the place and if you don't say anything whether it's good or bad if you don't say anything it doesn't really contribute to other people other people's decision making if you get stung really bad by someone just just let people let people know i mean it You've seen on this channel that I've got stung, so don't do what I do is one of the points there. Because I tried to find a whole heap of different sellers, just buy beginner's parcels from them and see what they give out and just review what comes up. And I didn't really stick to reputable sellers and we all saw that a couple weeks ago. I got stung on that one. So yeah, it's there's hundreds of buyers out there. Don't Don't stress... Don't rush into buying from one person or two people. It's You've got the power. You can take all day. It's really up to you. Ask around. If there's something sus that you've... I mean, a lot of people are messaging me at the moment and giving me emails saying, oh, this person seems a little bit sus. This is what they've said. These are the pictures, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, it's people are just trying to scam people it's the internet it's how it, it's how it goes it's how it's always gone and how it will forever go ah and then nine risk tolerance so this is mainly for rough it's not a thing for polished stones really it's less so for rubs so if your risk tolerance is pretty low just go for rubs you've, you're pretty much guaranteed to get what you see and if you've got an idea for the piece you can just go ahead and do it but you've just got to keep in mind all rough has a gamble. You could get a parcel that looks pretty good and you can get sand, cracks and potch lines just going through it. Just just under the surface, you'll just take off the crust and there'll be just rubbish underneath. And you can see here, I mean, I've had one that cracked. 
one at Sandy, one that's Pochi. And these aren't the only times that this has happened. It's happened off camera more times than even this because, I don't know, you can't just have every video just being take off the crust. Oh, look, sand spots, ruined. Nothing like that. So just keep that in mind when you're just starting out. Don't be too disheartened if you have a great piece of rough that you thought was going to be beautiful and it has a crack right in the middle or it's just got this huge potch line. It's... It's just opal, it's how it goes. If you want to avoid that completely, just buy rubs. Rubs are pretty good. As long as the seller's giving good enough video and pictures, it's it's great. So that's that. And number 10, which is really the most important thing, is just to have fun. If you're a hobby cutter like I am, you're really just here to have a bit of fun with it. It's a pretty relaxing thing to do. It's it's good, It's it's not bad. You can just chill out. So just have fun with it, don't get too stressed. Um, yeah, you can sell some stuff on the side or whatever and recoup your money, but really it's it's a hobby. You've got to have fun. Otherwise, what are you doing? It's just not it's just not great. So that is it for this kind of side of things. So I might as well just have a look at some comments and stuff. I don't even know the easiest place to look. I guess here. Oh yeah, 16 minutes. Not bad. How are we all? Inglorious is back. Nice one, audio worked perfect. Yeah, I saw that pop up and kept going. I can put a face to the name now. Yeah, I don't I don't actually have a lot of my stuff. I don't really have a camera. I don't really have a reason for me to be on camera. I mean, we're always looking at the stones or something else. It's Oh, I don't want to reveal that one. The stones. <laughs> so, yeah, I've, it's only really the live streams that I pop a camera on my face. Um, I've got a great face for radio, that's not a comment, that's just a thought going through my head. Hello, El Diablo, manatee. Oh, I love manatees. Weird, weird creature. Came on late, I'll have to watch the beginning later. Yeah, that's alright, Evelyn. Grant, how's it going? Hello. Dan came in right at the end. Oh, that's okay, because I wasn't interacting people with people at the start, so the end is probably the best time to time to come in. Oh, how is everyone? This is um this is still before seven o'clock in the morning Sunday for me, so it's quite it's quite an early early start. YouTube tells me that this is the time that my audience is on, so I've kinda gotta I've kinda gotta work with that. <laughs> A lot of you Americans have skewed the um, hours to uncomfortably early times, but whatever, I can rise up early. Hello, Paul Williams. Good to see you around. I think I make it like you, buying from lots of different people and the good ones I buy again. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. It's easier to kind of work out who the good buyers are before you buy, but... You know, it is what it is. 3pm here. Yeah, so that must be... I guess people watch YouTube a bit after lunch or something. You can see this is just a uh, coffee. Just a morning coffee for getting getting going on this. But yeah, anyone got any questions? I did want to mention, so this is the Black Opal Direct. Oh, I don't have a live stream, I don't know what's capturing. This is the Black Opal Direct little uh, body tone and brightness chart. Yeah, it's got both. And what they've done here is a little bit interesting because the body tone scale, N1 is the darkest, N9 is the lightest. But where this one differs to others is that they've got the brightest as B5 vivid and B1 as subdued. Whereas all the other ones I've seen, the brightest is typically B1. Because then you've just got body tone, the best, the highest value one is N1 and brightness, the highest brightness is B1. So I don't know, I don't know why this is the only one that switches it. And you can tell who watches Black Opal Direct on some of the Facebook groups. Because they'll say, oh, that's a brightness of B1. And everyone's like, what the hell? That's a brightness of B5 at best. So, yeah, they get it around the wrong way. But I don't know. It's it's pretty funny. I'd never really noticed it until people were 
commenting on Facebook about it. But now that I look at it, yeah, B5 is the brightest on the BOD one. So, a little bit interesting. 7 a.m. Sunday, surprise I'm up. That's Gown Scott. 2.33 here. I'm in America, but I'm English. Actually got a really good parcel off an eBay seller. I was kind of shocked. Yeah, I, I mean, I've got some good stuff from eBay. I've got some good Boulder stuff from eBay. I've never gotten any Black Opal or anything from eBay, just because it's... Uh, I mean, everything that I've seen so far has basically been potch sold kind of... At beginner, at potch kind of prices, but it's always just pretty really low grade, so... Good for the fish tank. Uh, Inglorious, at least with the bad stones you can work on your skills. That's true. Always take it seriously, guys. If Even if you've got just a piece of absolute garbage. Trying to find one. Alright, don't have any sitting around. Absolute piece of garbage. At least you can practice shaping. Get used to your bits. I mean, you can even condition some of your bits in. Some of them have a little bit of a jagged burr and whatnot. And you just want to get rid of that. So it's always useful. Um... Oh, a question. I'm wondering what you. I'm wondering what you do. You said you were a scientist. Oh, right. Um, yeah. So I'm a technician. I did have a uniform lying around, but this bloody curtain screens in the way, and oh, I chucked them in the wash. Actually, there's a vest. Um, yeah. I'm. I'm basically done an undergrad in double major in chemistry physics and then did a PhD in chemistry and now I work at as, as a technician at Adelaide University. So I look after machines, help researchers, all that kind of stuff. I'm basically the only chemistry expert in a engineering faculty. So I get, uh, yeah, I help out the engineers understand a lot of the chemistry side of things, which is, yeah, it's, it's a fun job. It's not bad. Ever been noodling to collect some yourself? No, but I do have a friend that mines in Andamooka and I talk to him every now and then and when he needs some help, I'm willing to waddle up there with him, probably drive out to his place and then we'll drive out there because I don't have a car that I would be confident in taking out to the middle of nowhere. Andamooka's not that far away, but it's still a bit of a prone to breakdown kind of scenario. But no, I haven't I haven't gone out so far. It'll be something I'll look at doing eventually when, you know, the current state of things is a little bit better. Uh, if you want to see something really interesting, just go to Google and type in Adelaide COVID. And the stories of the last week have been insane. I haven't seen anything like it around the rest of the world. It's been crazy. You wouldn't even understand. We, uh, no, nah, I don't even want to spoil it. You guys should look that up. It's, it's wild. You won't believe what you're reading. Um, buy from miners. Yeah, buying from miners is, is, is ideal. Or, if you've got someone like Julian, who you can send out there to buy from miners for you, then that's also ideal, because then you don't have to go out there yourself. Buying in person from miners is the best thing, because one thing, this is actually a good point, one thing is that you've always got to keep in the back of your mind when someone's selling a piece of rough and they also cut themselves, um, there's got to be a reason why they're selling it. So it's obviously something they don't want to cut. I mean, I've got a bag of stuff here that I bought from someone that they didn't want to... It was basically in their too hard jar and I'll reveal that on the channel sometime soon. It's just kind of sitting there right there. Um... But yeah, if they're selling it, there's probably a reason for them selling it, and you've just got to just got to keep that in mind. They're probably not going to sell you the best material unless you build up a relationship with a couple people. So yeah, even buying from miners, a lot of miners cut, and you've got to keep that in mind. They're not just selling everything they pull out of the ground. They're probably keeping a lot of the best stuff for themselves. So yeah. If you're going to buy from a miner, try to find one that doesn't cut, but that's pretty rare these days because the equipment's out there. Even though I'm struggling to find secondhand stuff. Um, Welsh, but in England. Welsh and England have the same time zone though, don't they? Pretty sure they do. 2020, so, oh yeah. Late at night. 
I wish there would be a seller page where only miners can sell their opals. There's one on Facebook that is meant to have a lot of um, miners on it, but it doesn't really seem to be the miners that are the ones that are selling the most stuff. So yeah, it's, it's tough. Unless you're going to go out to Lightning Ridge or out to Cuba, it's kind of, kind of tough to buy from miners. But if you do that, you can just go to a gem stall, stall if they have a market kind of thing and pick up some stuff or just go to the pub where everyone hangs out, pick up some stuff there. I wish there were, ah, uh, yeah, read that one. One of my boys is a chemist. It's a good, it's a good field. I wish more people would get into chemistry. I mean, chemistry and physics in high schools, looking at the stats for recent times, it just keeps, just keeps dropping. It's, I, I reckon the teachers need to do a better job because it's good stuff can understand a lot of stuff. Awesome. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Oh, we've got a few Pauls in there. Paul's on the channel at the moment. There's at least two. Um, yeah, visiting Lightning Ridge. I mean, even I want to do that and I'm an Australian, so <laughs> I'm here and I still can't do it. I cannot go to Lightning Ridge. I'm based in Europe. I mean... I wouldn't say you can't. You can fly across. It's only, uh, depending on where in Europe you are, probably about one and a half grand Australian. I mean, last time I went over to the UK for a conference, it was, yeah, I reckon it was just under two grand plus accommodation and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, all right. It's quite expensive. Hi, Robert, how's it going? But uh, yeah, I mean, I if I do get to do a lot of any kind of mining trips or even just a visit up to Lightning Ridge or something, I'll definitely record it. And then you can kind of, kind of experience what it's like to go there. But it's, yeah, I mean, watching a video of someone else going there, I wouldn't find that overly exciting. But who knows, at, at least it's a substitute. I do want to take some uh, videos of mining, mining process. So my friends are uh, open open cut kind of miner so it's just you're basically digging in a wall but I would like to go out to Lightning Ridge and dive down a hole and have a look at how other people are how other people are going but oh, not bad we got a dozen people to the channel during this live stream it's kind of cool I thought I might as well do this live. I haven't done a live stream for ages. I even forgot how to set it up. So I'm glad this is even working at the moment. It seems to be working. I've got three screens to look at. So one over here, the one with the presentation on it there and the other one over here. Let's leave this on a better looking slide. There we go. We'll leave it on a black opal direct slide. It's got some pretty stones on it. By the way, I found a company to Europe, a company in Europe that sells Nova Points, French company. Oh, right. Oh, that's good. What do you mean by the round top? You mean the bullets or the, you're trying to get the cylinders? Because I only ever really used the bullets. So that's a bullet, I guess that's what you're calling the round, round point. It's kind of, it is kind of useful to have the round tip on it. I thought about buying the barrel ones, but I thought the bullet ones are a little bit more versatile and can get into some uneven surfaces a bit better. But I'm I'm glad I'm glad to hear that there's somewhere in Europe selling them because I've had a lot of people message me mainly from the UK saying it's so hard to get so hard to get bloody Nova chips. When are you going to cut some black opal? I mean, I've got a few pieces so for the channel I'm trying to stick a lot to beginner stuff so I do cut a few higher value pieces but typically on the side outside of the channel 
I mean, I've even recorded a couple, and I might I might end up releasing a few. I'm going to transition to a little bit better quality rough because buying the beginner stuff. I mean, it it's fun, and I like doing it, and like recording the videos for you guys and stuff. But it would be nice to get some nicer nicer pieces finished out of it, and I'll I guess I will sort out buying some better better black opal. I've already lined up some stuff which is like kind of a mid-tier, so maybe like the more advanced beginner, but still in the beginner range. But I can I can cut some black opal. I've, I've been cutting a lot of boulder lately. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five pieces of boulder on the go, but yeah, I can I can mix in some black opal if that's what people are after. I, I tend to lean away from black opal just because there's black opal direct, of course, and he only cuts black opal and cut some really good stuff and makes good videos about it so I don't really think that's my area but I don't know if people want to see it I can do it I think if I went down the hall I would get scared yeah I, I guess a lot of people would struggle with some claustrophobia when it comes to going down some of those they're not selling the bullets so rounder Nova points than bullets. I don't think I've even seen those. I mean, do, I guess they're selling the proper rounds, which is a bit weird. Greetings from Barcelona, California. Oh, Catalonia. Yeah, I was going to say Barcelona's not in uh, California, but all right, Barcelona, Catalonia. That's uh, an interesting place to come from. How's it going, Ernest? YouTube doesn't show me the uh, the stats for <laughs> Catalonia, so that's um, I guess you're in the other category when I look at that page. As long as you keep doing boulders too, I'll always I'll always be doing boulders. I mean, oh, do I reveal it here? It it won't look very good on camera. Mm, nah, that deserves better. I'll set up a rotating table and everything to reveal that one. I'm gonna. I'm thinking of doing a series where I showcase a couple higher end opals, just because I don't know. It's it's not carving. It's not cutting. It's not teaching. It's just here is a nice opal. Put it on a rotating platform with some lights and a camera, and I don't know. Maybe I can talk about something while it's spinning around. Could be good. Seem to be less tutorials online for Boulder Opal. Justin dominates YouTube with respect to Black Opal. Yeah, exactly. He does, he does too good a job with the black opal. I mean, I, I don't see any point in me really doing it that much other than to maybe just showcase the lower end of quality when it comes to black opal, which I can do. I reckon I, reckon I might as well. I have, I mean, I'm still working away on the black opal direct, black opal direct beginner's, beginner's parcel, which, I mean, for what it was, it's, it's a bit of fun, and if you're starting out, it's a nice intro into it. It's a little expensive. I mean, I'm still working on... Oh, God, maybe I'll do that this weekend. I might work on the um, kits that I was putting together for beginners. So I might just go through that a little bit now. So I'm basically putting together these kits that are similar to the Black Opal Direct. These ones, but with a less fancy case. It'll basically all be in a Ziploc bag. But it's a kit that has a little bit of boulder, a little bit of black opal, a little bit of cuvapedi, and it's got some colour mixed in there. I mean, some of it's a little bit potchy. I'm, I'm getting rid of anything with sand. I, when you buy kilo bags of beginner stuff, some of it's pretty sandy, which ain't, ain't great. So I've got a bag of just pure rubbish. I don't know what I'll do with that sand stuff. Probably just throw it out in the garden. But I've got a lot of like beginner level crystal and some a little bit of black with colour on it. But of course, once you start getting black with colour, it gets quite pricey. So there's not a lot of that. It's very similar to Justin's, except a lot larger. And I'm going to aim for like a $50 price point. I think asking $150 is a bit much. But his came with like video tutorials and stuff that he doesn't have on his YouTube channel, which were a little bit more in depth. So, and then you get the little bonuses, like this little body tone chart and brightness chart. But, yeah. I mean, like I, like I said, on this slide, actually, he does sell everything at a quite, a quite a high price because he is a retail seller. 
is that's just the pricing category he's in. So, and it's Black Opal Day. It's kind of like buying Gucci branded shoes if they make shoes. Yeah, all right. I don't know brands. What does Gucci sell? Handbags? Probably handbags. Gucci branded handbags rather than going down to Kmart. I'd be the Kmart. Um, I got a black opal in a not expensive parcel of Nobby. That is true. You can be lucky. I find that it can be luckier with bolder opal. So you can buy some rough boulder opal at, I don't know, 10 to 15 bucks a stone, and you can actually end up with something that you can get away with selling for at least 50 bucks. And you can make back your parcel pretty quickly on a couple pieces if they pan out. Seems less common in black opal because people, people selling black opal will really look at their rough a lot of the time. Problem is that he works with nobbies that I will probably never see in real life. That's that's true. He must have some good connections. I mean, he's got to have good connections. I mean, what does it say? Black Opal Direct. Established 1961. If you don't have good relationships, like I said, the best stuff that you buy will be from good relationships that you build with people. If you haven't built some good relationships by then, it's, uh yeah, it's highly... You're doing something wrong, so... The nobbies that he buys and the price that he buys them for is probably not what a beginner is going to ever really have in front of them or even have the money to buy. So, And really, at beginner level, if you've... I mean, I've shown a lot of $250 kind of-ish range parcels and you can't expect a lot from that. If you can scrape back your 250 bucks, you're doing pretty well, but... Until you start forking out a thousand bucks for a parcel from Lightning Ridge or something, you'd, it's going to be tough going to make back a lot of money. I've uh, done a piece of boulder recently. Finished rubbing. Was in 500 and dipped it in car lacquer. Not sure if it's a thing, but works a treat. I mean, no, it is It is actually a thing. So, um, ba 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 ba. So sometimes you get pieces that, yeah, I do just have a lot of opal sitting around. So sometimes you do get a lot of pieces. So this was one that I had in a couple videos, and that's a piece of boulder. And it had a nice enough surface to actually take a polish. But sometimes you'll just get a porous piece of boulder that won't take a polish at all. And you do actually do, maybe not car lacquer, but very similar, just a resin. And you will just coat, coat the stone with a resin, just a thin layer. And then you'll just polish up the resin. It's it's just like adding water. It covers up a lot of those kind of pits and whatnot. Pits and little cracks. And yeah, if it's a porous stone, yeah, a lot of people cover it. I mean, some people just do it with super glue. So, not advisable, but some people do it. Um... Well, if you found a good supplier, make sure you keep in touch with them because you don't want to lose them then. Good suppliers are hard to come by these days. Yeah, that's true. I did hear that uh, Black Elf Direct did have a hand in the mining game. I mean, the best, the easiest way to make friends in the mining world is probably to actually help them mine, so. It does make sense. But yeah, oh well. I don't know what I'm doing with the rest of the weekend. Hope you guys have got some plans. A lot of you are still in Saturday night. Whereas I'm on Sunday morning, so I don't have a lot left. Just looking around my desk, wondering what the hell's going on. My god. Made a bit of a mess around here at the moment, which is not great. It's because I got that mat 
for the backing of my Opal videos and so I've kind of let the rest of the area get a bit out of hand. I made a video on masks to wear so I've got like 400 different types of masks over here. I've got to get rid of that stuff. Cutting Opals here this weekend? Yes. I hope most of the people in the chat are cutting Opals this weekend. Oh, it's starting to get warm here. So I've got this little little thermometer and I work in like a little garage. We don't park the car in there and it gets really hot. So I was sitting here in about, uh, if it's 30 degrees outside, it'll be about 36 in here with the sun beating down on the, on the uh, garage door doors actually I've got one on each side both east and west so you get heat in the morning and then you get heat right at the end of the day and I can get to 40 degrees celsius which is Fahrenheit that's over 100 isn't it so working in the morning it's always sad Two to four inches of snow. I hate I hate snow. I ha I like the heat. I don't like the cold very much. I mean, you can always rug up, but most of the time I don't actually wear a shirt when I'm in here, which is probably another reason I don't appear on camera. But at the moment, I've got a nice tie-dye. Just because uh, I was watching a Vaughn stream yesterday and she was wearing a nice tie-dye shirt, so I thought, why not? I'll go tie-dye as well. Love the snow. I hate the snow. It's just cold and it's wet. <laughs> loaded up on masks after last week's fiasco um it wasn't really based on last week's fiasco but i've just I, I mean i've just got a lot of masks i just went from these kind of little hospital masky masky kind of things which i don't like for cutting oval by the way it's not the uh it's not the way to go i much rather prefer to go for the uh double double strap ones that kind of hold them to your face a bit better and they're a little bit thicker but, um, yeah, I mean, there'll be a video on masks and opal cutting. Just use a lot of water. Uh, cutting this weekend. But it is very cold now where I cut my opals. Can I ask a question? You can always ask a question. Ask your questions before I wrap up. Better wear a good mask for cutting opal. That is true, especially if you're cutting dry. Like, if you're cutting dry, you've got to go for a P2. I like this one here. This is the uh, mask of choice for me. I find it fairly, fairly comfortable. I mean, this felt nose tip part, I'm not a huge fan of. There's also this one, which is like a cloth, cloth one. Or... If you want to get real serious, oh bloody hell! Why don't I put it back there? Oh, the curtain's attacking me. If you want to get really serious, then you go this way, which um, yeah, is a little bit excessive. You just get these little filters on it, chuck it on. It's good for when you're working with fumes. I've also got a full face mask kind of thing, but that is for not opal. Um, freezing here in France. Staying in and cutting warm. It's a good way to go. Even when you cut wet, wear a mask. It's a good, it's a good way to go. Like I said, this is my, this is my go-to most of the time. It's a nice, nice P two. Nice and comfortable, metal strap at the top, the double strappings, keeps it attached to your face. You'll uh, you'll never breathe in any kind of silica, but it's serious business. Do you know Mark? Yes, I do know Mark. I've seen him on Facebook a bit. Um, I haven't bought anything from him. I have seen him selling a few bits and pieces. What I will say is I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I always just thought it was just Lanson, but I don't know. How do you price your cut opal? Um, 
So I don't sell any of my card opal at the moment. I basically make it into jewelry and give it away most of the time. Like, where are some of my pieces at the moment? Like this one that I did a video on the other day. Well, this one I won't sell or give away. This one I'll just cut up, free the opal, and maybe make a better design. Because, I mean, what good is a earring? It should be a pair at the least, so I'll have to wait till I get a pair, maybe. But, in terms of how I would price them, if I was selling them, a lot of the time, I would just go with the wholesale value. So, even this slide that we've got up here at the moment, I would not be going for the retail price kind of stuff. I'm definitely more of a wholesale value kind of guy. If I can just sell the cut opal for the same as what I bought it for rough, I am perfectly fine with that. I've got a full-time job. I'm not doing opal for money. I'm not doing this channel for money. It's just the thing that I do to take take up a bit of time, especially at bloody six o'clock in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. It's a, it's a good hobby. Started doing auctions on his Facebook page, the Black Lighters, yep, really nice auctions if you ask me. Yeah, and the other thing is, I think, well, I can't be 100%, but I think he's South Australian based, which means he's not too far from me. I want to I wanna try to tee up some interviews with people in the Opal world, but there's a lot of the people I want to interview are really reclusive, so it's not, um, yeah, they're... <laughs> They're not keen to be on camera, they're not even keen to be, I don't know, just voice recorded. It's, yeah, it's a bit interesting. I am wondering whether I can start getting some buyers to get on the channel and have a chat. But, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I've got a lot of ideas for this channel. I've got a whiteboard covered in ideas and they're cruising along slowly. L. Anson. Very happy, we'll definitely buy from him again. Alright, I'll definitely have to check that out. Oh, from Australia to Europe. So, this parcel that I've recently bought was from... Well, I don't want to reveal it yet, but it was from Europe. And it took two months to get here, so maybe a bit over two months. I kind of lost track of time. I just kind of assumed it would get here eventually. Um, yes, but you'll be very happy when you get it. It's true. Do you have a favourite opal in your collection? I do. And I recently just bought one that eclipses my other favourite. So I've got a new favourite in the last couple of weeks. And it's a very large boulder. And I haven't showcased it on the channel, but it might have to be one of the first stones I do. You're lucky to live in Australia, man. So much easier to buy opal there. That is that is true. And postage, I guess. I save a lot on postage. Oh. Terry in the uh, reselling game. Mintaby stuff. Mintaby stuff, um yeah, Mintaby stuff is interesting at the moment. It's it's an interesting position they've got themselves into there with the pricing and everything. So, yeah, Mintaby's... I'm still looking to get a bit of Mintaby stuff. I've got someone lined up. If you watch the uh, Outback Opal Hunters, you would probably know them. But I'm just waiting for... Well, they have to be able to get to their Mintaby, which is interstate, which you can't really do in Australia at the moment. So we'll have to wait and see. I do want some Mintaby stuff. Mintaby is what I'm lacking the most, I believe. At the moment, looking at everything on this desk, I don't see a single piece of mint to be. So, yeah, I do need to stock up. What is a black lighter? Actually, that's not a bad question. I don't know where they got that name from. When you do start selling, give me a heads up. Bars parcel took 101 days. 101 days. That's like three and a half months or whatever, that's... Bloody hell, that's... yeah, alright. You've had it worse than me. Two to four weeks it takes to get opals to Europe for me. Two to four weeks. That must be like pre-COVID times, because that's 
That's quick. Oh, of course, that's where the black lighting, yeah, yeah. I should have known that. Yeah, very well done there, Robert. You've got a better memory than me. Mark sells Mintaby. I mean, if he still sells Mintaby and it's at the price of, price range that I'm kind of looking at, I reckon, I, I reckon I'll check it out. Mintaby is, yeah, Mintaby is interesting. Lindsay, it is very tough to buy good Mintaby at the moment. Yeah, I don't have a black light or anything. I've thought about it, but I don't know. It's not much use for me. It's, it'll just be a bit of fun more than anything. I think he does. All right, I'll definitely have to check. I might as well. So this and this is when it gets serious, when I get a uh, pen and paper out. But I'll write that down and follow up on that. Make sure he's... I know he's on my list of sellers to try out, but just in... Specifically, I'll go out and get in touch. Yeah. All right. Well, if he's got auctions, I will check them out. Otherwise, I'll just try to organize something. Organize something with him privately. Yeah, the Mintaby situation is a little bit more complicated than that. There are actually still people mining in Mintaby. And a lot of people are pouncing, well, a lot of people are advertising it like it's fully shut down, nothing's coming out of it anymore, all that kind of stuff, and they're they're launching those prices sky high for stuff that's got some pretty bad crazing. That's been my uh, findings since looking, which is why I went for the reputable kind of sellers. But if you guys are saying that Mark is one of those, then yeah, I'll definitely, I mean, he seems pretty good anyway, so I'll definitely check it out. Oh, oh and this live stream's coming up to an hour. Wowzers. I guess I should head off and let you guys head off and we can continue our weekends good night to some of you good morning to some of you some of you are just still in the afternoon so it's interesting it's getting warm in here already so i am just starting to cook now at 7 30 in the morning i think today's going to be a hot day there was a thunderstorm when i just before i started the stream and i was hoping it would fade away before turning on the mic but Luckily enough, it faded out. Ooh, four dollars a carrot. I mean, if it's good stuff, it's worth four dollars a carrot. So, I will check it out. You two and glorious have a very nice weekend. Same with the rest of you. Some of you have more weekend left than me. So, actually, most of you have more weekend left than me. In Australia, we live in the future, and we live on the bottom of the planet. So. We're a bit topsy-turvy down here. But, luckily enough, as of this morning, I'm allowed out of the house. So that's a plus. That is a plus. Thank you, Scottish. Scottish wife 14. One of 14 wives. That's, uh... That's a lot. Wait, that's not wife. That's witty. Reading is not a strong point. You don't need reading for a PhD. Don't worry about it. Enjoy the sun. It's true. The sun probably had a hand in making these beautiful opals that you see on the screen right here. Because these from my Lightning Ridge. Lightning Ridge gets over 50 degrees. I think last year I was... I think Jared said that they get got to... I don't know, 53 degrees or something, which is quite hot. Quite hot in the Celsius scale. 
Don't know what it is in Fahrenheit. It's definitely over 120. Catch you later, Paul. Catch you later, everybody. Um, yeah, I should do these more often. If I've got a topic or something to talk about, I'll do it. But, yeah. For now, I'll see you all in the next video. I've got some carvings coming up. I've got some opal reviews, parcel reviews. Um, some equipment reviews. I've got a, I've got a fair, fair bit of stuff to get on, get on the channel. So, we'll see how it goes. And yeah, alright, I'll see you guys around. Have 